maybe let me bring this to you, Tony, as you take an aviation perspective on this. And I'll ask you both questions at the same time. Building on the discussion we just had on SAF, how do you think about just the journey on transport decarbonization more broadly in aviation? What are Air Asia's current in initiatives? What are the challenges you see and what change would you like to see going ahead? Uh, okay. Uh, firstly, thank you for inviting me. I, I got to say Indonesia does things really well. What an incredible audience. Uh, you always show up the rest of ASEAN. So congratulations to Indonesia. A big and, hand for uh, that. Well I done. feel, yeah. <clears throat> and make sure everyone flies on AirAsia from now on. <laughs> okay. I, I feel a bit naked here. Everyone's got lots of notes and stuff. Um, it's a very intellectual panel. But I'm glad Jeslyn's next to me and her fan club on the front row there. Um, <laughs> Sina Mas will be sponsoring all of AirAsia's uh, SAF going forward for the next five years. <laughs> so thank you, Pap Frankie, for uh, supporting us going forward. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Before we talk about SAF, just a couple of things. Um, obviously, aviation is always in the news on sustainability, but as you rightly said, it's a very small part of carbon emissions, but we all have to play our part. A couple of things before, I mean, the, the, the hot topic is sustainable aviation fuel, uh, which of course, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear what Jesslyn said, because I'm a big advocate of palm oil being in that solution. Uh, but before that, governments um, and aviation authorities can play a large part in reducing fuel by better planning in the sky. If all of you have flown and all of you have gone around the airport three times before we land. And so uh, we're encouraging airport regulators to replan the sky. We believe you can bring down at least 10% in terms of fuel burn by better air, air, naviga air, naviga air navigation systems. Um, you know, we're encouraging Indonesia to put in RMPR, which will reduce at least three minutes from each landing and takeoff. And, and so there's simple things that can be done. Uh, if you think of the number of minutes you waste before the plane takes off in, in uh, queuing, all of these things we've been working very hard over the last five years. And um, governments are obviously supportive, but I think they need to be more diligent in sorting out efficiencies up in the sky, because there's a huge amount of inefficiencies in space planning. And even within ASEAN, you know, going from one sky to another, from Singapore to Indonesia or Malaysia, there is so much differences. So uh, while I encourage everyone to, everyone is encouraged talking about SAF, I think it's very important to talk about what can be done now and increase the efficiency. And that can be said for road, that can be said for ships. There's a lot of wasted fuel sitting around in traffic jams, uh, both in the air, sea, and sky. In terms of SAF, I'm a little bit of a skeptic. Um, obviously, uh, unless we have reality solutions like palm oil. Um, I know it's frowned upon in the West, and I, I frankly do not understand that. Um, you know, we have palm trees all over Southeast Asia. Uh, whether it was right or wrong, it's there. The forests uh, have been replaced with palm trees. They do decarbonize. They do. They are, not, they are a lung. They may not as be a bigger lung as the forest, but they are a lung. And so why uh, the West is against palm oil beats me. SAF in its present state will not fulfill, if all of the supply comes together with cooking oil and some of the other methods, it would only have about 4% of total aviation fuel needs. And so I'm against the tokenism. You know, I mean, I, I think it's pointless AirAsia putting 1%. You know, it may, feel, may, may, feel, may Airbus feel good, but it doesn't actually do anything in terms of decarbonizing. And it increases the cost by about 86%. Uh, I'm here discussing about how we can reduce airfares. And so really we need to look at supply. Obviously it's the right way forward, one of the, one of the ways forward in terms of decarbonizing. But we've really got to look at the realities of price, we've really got to look at the realities of supply. And that's why palm oil is a good, we should, we should be encouraging that going forward, 
palm oil waste, palm oil itself, and cooking oil and the other constituents. And it's a large part of our economy, um, as was rightly said by Jeslin. So how do we decarbonize going forward? Um, technology, which we rely on Airbus and engine manufacturers. Uh, presently, we will do whatever we can. Obviously, we put a lot of seats in our plane. Uh, for one SIA first class, you can fit 10 AirAsia passengers in. So we're much more efficient than the Singaporeans, okay? Um, and at a much better price, by the way. S secondly, obviously, we're very focused on weight. We're very focused on, on the efficiencies I mentioned earlier. We will bring in a carbon credit system. I think the biggest thing airlines can do is educate the public on their own carbon emissions. So when you fly, you are causing some carbon emissions. And that I think we can do a good job in educating people and pricing it right. I encourage ASEAN governments to have projects here as well. Right now, when you look at Corsair, all the credits we do go somewhere else, to the rest of the world. We need to really invest in carbon credit projects in our part of the world. Uh, so that will be a large part. And then, of course, sustainable aviation fuel, which I think right now is pie in the sky. Um, I'm thrilled what I heard. I really am. Uh, we, are a, we are in total support of palm oil being one of the constituents of sustainable aviation fuel. Um, so a mixture of uh, fixing the sky, getting ready efficiency in airports. Uh, one thing that no one talks about is airports themselves burn a lot of fuel in vehicles moving around. Yeah. You know, whether it's buses, whether it's the tow trucks, um, the APUs, etc. And so I've been encouraging electrification of um, airport vehicles. That there's a lot. Uh, and getting to and from airports need to be easier. You know, and governments have a tendency of building an airport a million miles away from the populations. And so people forget that to get to the airport, and if you don't build mass transport systems, you're going to cause a lot of extra carbon. So the things that aren't talked about, I just want to bring up here. Um, carbon credits is reality, but I think ASEAN needs to do more in having more carbon credit projects in our part of the world. Uh, and sustainable aviation fuel is not a reality. I think it makes no difference if we put 1% or 2%. We need products such as palm oil and palm oil waste to come in. And, uh, and finally, technology which uh, I think Airbus and the others are doing a fantastic job in moving that forward. Each uh, new plane that comes out, uh, the carbon comes down quite substantially. The latest technology on engines bring us down about 15%. So I think a combination of those four will work. And the education part, I think, is very important. That's great, Tony. I mean, you, you've certainly educated me because I, I'm, I'm taking a flight tomorrow. I'll change it to uh, I'll change it to make sure I fly Air Asia now. So That's good to the see. The one Mc is to ten ratio. Was I always thought McKinsey was smart, exactly. so at least now I know I can confirm you are. Your, your, your one to ten ratio is very compelling. So at least I'm educated. So thank you for that. Um, and by the way, I think on a separate note, but Bujeslin earlier talked about. I, I agree SAF is in early stages. I think the number you shared of going still, if you take current commitments from 1 to 2 million to 380 million, somewhere, somewhere that supply has to work, that market has to work. And how do we do that using whether it's palm oil or other biofuels or other ways to do it would still remain a critical challenge. But I agree that's the technology early on, and I like your point of it's going to be a 1 to 2 percent. I personally think this idea of can we take out 20 percent by better fixing the sky better aircraft design, which we'll come to in a minute with Anand, is, is a critical one. So thank you.